Matt Kenseth joins us now. First of all, before we talk about the car, I know these are unusual times, Matt. So thanks for being here. How's the family? Yeah, no problem. Everybody's doing really good. You know, we've been, um, I hate to say locked down, but we've been here for eight weeks, I think, since the girls have basically left the property. So they're uh, they're doing surprisingly well. Um, and Katie's doing surprisingly well. She's been, uh, you know, trying to teach three kids and take care of the house and the, all the normal things that go on with, with taking care of the house. So um, I don't know if I've been a lot of help, but everybody is doing good. All right. Now, now she has to deal with you getting ready to go back to work full time. You did say that up until two weeks ago, you hadn't thought about racing. So what, what are the conversations like? What does Chip and the team say to you when they call and when did this all start? Uh, really not very long ago, maybe, maybe a week and a half or something like that. And, um, uh, Max Jones, who I've known for a long time, um, called me and said that they were you know, looking to put somebody in a car and kind of, um, you know, talked to, asked me if I'd be interested in doing it. And I was kind of, kind of a little bit and I, not a lot. And I called him back after I talked to Katie and, and had a whole bunch of questions for him. And we talked for a long time. And then honestly, for three or four days, Katie and I just talked about it a lot and, um, thought about it a lot and kind of looked at looked at the circumstances of, of getting in that ride you know it's a it's a good car that's been running well um you know it's a little different situation and the last time i, I kind of tried to come back you know and kind of try to do a rebuilding and kind of help something so i felt like we could get in there and hopefully be competitive right away um the schedule is certainly different it's already may you know so the season's obviously going to be condensed one way or another a little bit um you know and it just seemed like um kind of with everything going on and it's just an unexpected, unique opportunity at a unique time. And just um, everything kind of felt right about giving it a shot. Matt, speaking about uh, talking to Katie, I think about our conversation right after the the crash at the Daytona 500 with Ryan Newman. And we kind of joked around, you know, about, man, I'm glad that we're not, we're not doing that anymore. Um, so I want to know how you were able to sell Katie on this. And then also how excited are your girls to get to see you uh, race again? I, I know that, uh, Mallory and Claire, you know, really were not old enough when you were driving a few years ago and now we get to see that. So are they excited about it? Yeah. So, um, I, I didn't really sell Katie on it. Uh, I really didn't. So, um, we've made, uh, you know, we're coming up on being married 20 years and, uh, we make, uh, uh, all our decisions together. And my biggest thing with her with this is I was like, look, at, you know, she she knows me better than I know me. So I'm like, I need you to be 100% honest and tell me 100% what you think. And we talked about a lot of different scenarios and everything that was going on and uh, um, just decided it felt like the right thing for both of us. So we really honestly made a decision 100%, 100% together. You know, if I thought she had any reservations, I just wouldn't have done it because I'm, I'm, I'm happy and everything's good here. And um, I didn't really feel like I, I needed to go do it. Um, but it is, a, I felt like it's a good opportunity. I really kind of wanted to go do it. I'm uh, super excited to go back racing. I, uh, I almost feel like I'm starting my career again in a way. Like I'm almost almost that excited to kind of get there and get back to work and uh, and kind of see what it's like. So uh, the girls are really excited. It's out of everybody, they're the most excited because, like you say, they don't remember it, you know. And Kaylin uh, tries to tell them what it's all about and all like, and I, I I haven't really told them like I'm not sure when or if you're going to be able to go to the racetrack with all the craziness that's going on right now. But they're uh, they're really excited about it, um, you know. So. Um, they're looking forward to seeing me race again, for sure. You know, there's going to be a lot of differences for you, Matt. You mentioned some of them, right? We don't really know what the schedule is going to look like. You don't get an opportunity to go over there right now and kind of bond with the team and hang out with them because everyone's isolated. But Kurt Busch is a former teammate of yours. He did take to Twitter mentioning how excited he is uh, to be reunited with you and, and cannot wait to get back to racing. What are your thoughts when you kind of look at the organization and how you're going to get up to speed with those guys? Yeah, I mean, I think Kurt will be a big part of that. I mean, that was, uh, Kurt was a great teammate. I've always said that he's one of the better teammates I've ever had. And I mean, he's always, uh, always been very unselfish. Always works really hard, puts in all the effort. He's at all the meetings. He's, uh, um, you know, racing kind of comes first for him. So that, that is important to me as well. Um, I called him a few times, uh, just to ask him a couple questions about, about some stuff. And, uh, I look forward to working with him again, too. I think he'll definitely be an asset to, to hopefully help me get up to speed uh, a little bit quicker. Cause I realize the learning curve is going to be, uh, extremely steep for me. Matt, we know that uh, the schedule is going to be kind of crazy with the amount of races they're going to try to pack into the first uh, month or two of racing. And I know that, you know, we talk about our running or cycling all the time. I know you're in great physical shape, probably the better shape than you were at any point in your in your driving career. Um, but racing shape is a little bit different. So are you worried at all about trying to race two times a week, especially with the, you know, the 600 at Charlotte being one of those first races? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm probably only concerned about the first race just because the you know how it is all the um you know you're always very particular i'm not quite as particular but you know like something doesn't fit quite right that was a dig. Jamie's you know, not particular no but you're gonna know what i mean right like there was one yeah. time amy was gone for practice i squirted water bottles windshield he pulled back into his stall and made him clean the windshield before i'm not that particular before he go on a racetrack that's a true story um but you know, I mean, if something doesn't fit right and it's jabbing you in the side and you got to do that for like four hours or the pedal doesn't feel right, like, you know, all those things, I guess I probably worry about that more than anything. I mean, I think as far as like, you know, staying hydrated and eating right and feeling physically okay at the end of the race, I, I feel good about that. But you're right. Racing is just different. You know, you don't have to be, a, a, you know run fast or strong or do any of that to race but it's certainly uh you know the the noise and the heat and being stationary for that long like all those things is is, is certainly different and the only way to really get in shape for us to go do it so um you know certainly the first race if we don't get to practice or don't get much practice i'm a little little concerned about that matt you know chip ganassi he he's one of a kind and, and there's a guy sitting here with us who raced with him or for him do you have any questions for jamie about what it's like to to race for old chip <laughs> You know, I actually had a lot of questions for Jamie, and there was a lot of times in the last five days that I, I meant to call him. Actually, once I did call him, he didn't answer his phone. He's still mad uh, he's not true. But, but here's the thing. So so Jamie and Jeff Burton are, are two of my best friends. And uh, even like Jeff, when I went back to Roush and stuff, I wouldn't call him. And I, I didn't end up calling Jamie because they're media now. You, you can't totally trust the media members. You can't just, I, I was afraid he'd leak it. <laughs> well... Matt, that's probably true, but uh, <laughs> as your friend and as a former driver for Chip Ganassi, I certainly will do anything I can to help you out. Thank you. So besides watching Jamie and myself and, and Larry Mack on Sundays pre-race, because I know that that's what you've been doing, what else have you been doing with your time, Matt? It's been a while since a lot of us have seen you. Yeah, well, I mean, the last, I mean, we've been here eight weeks you now, so we uh, we went to uh, Colorado ski, and we always do that in the winter. Um, so when we got home from there, the kids had school for a few weeks, and then uh, uh, really all this craziness started. We were getting ready to go to Florida for uh, the kids spring break and see Ross and his family and my dad. And uh, it's actually the day before we left and all this stuff started kind of escalating. We decided that it was smarter to stay home. And uh, so we've been home for two months. So we've pretty much been doing, uh, keeping the kids busy with, uh, you know, physical activities, um, you know, doing some PE outside and some running and some gymnastics and uh, basketball, things like that. And then obviously the, the, the teaching, you know, Kaylin is, is really self-sufficient. She can pretty much do everything online and uh, Grace is pretty good too. And then uh, Katie's pretty much a full-time kindergartner teacher right now. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been busy around here, but I, I think the one positive out of, all this craziness is all the family time. I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel the same, but like we spent, you know, eight weeks together without having any activities to go do. And all the kids have been able to spend all that time together without being pulled in all the different directions that you are today with kids, sports and school and after school activities and all that stuff. So, um, we've been, we've enjoyed that part of it. Um, you know, for sure, but it's been busy around here. Matt, is there, uh, is there any chance that, uh, with all the spare time you have that we might see you do some eye racing? <laughs> I didn't even know what an eye racing was until the, the other day. So, um, I, you know, I don't know a lot about it except for it hasn't worked out real well for a few people. Um, so I have no, probably not. not. Play lawyer? <laughs> You know, I don't know. Jimmy has a whole rig set up, and uh, Jimmy called me and said I could come down and drive it if he thought it would help me get up to speed for Darlington's or wherever we're going to go first. So I might, uh, I might take him up on that and go do that, but probably not with anybody else. It hasn't worked out well for him, that's for sure. It hasn't. Yeah, <laughs> he just wrecks every week. It's it's horrible. <laughs> but you get a reset button or something, right? You get I mean, a reset. They give you one. Fret. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best part. Have you done it yet? Just hit that reset button. Well, we cannot wait till you hit the reset button, Matt, and, and get back <laughs> in that car and see you out on the track in that 42. We really, really appreciate the time. And again, we can't wait to see you out there. So thanks so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. For the best access, perspective, and personalities in all of sports, follow us at Fox Sports on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.